should we buy or sell lean hogs? So first off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So lean hogs, it's a commodity, it's a, a meat. Uh, so 11% from the low and 16% away from the highs. There is an ETF with the, to the ticker hogs. We will analyze the futures, but um, yeah, and, and, and the analysis also goes for other ways to get exposure to lean hogs. ARSD chart, weekly data points, and uh, we can go pretty far back. Uh, humans have traded lean hogs for a very long time, you know, long before financial markets. Something that is very apparent here for lean hogs is that there are time cycles that go all the way back here to 74. The time cycles have definitely differed in duration, but some persist. Like you, if you see this very general time cycle, here it fits, here it fits, it fits here, it even fits now. So that so there's something very cyclical about uh, commodities, especially here lean hogs. The issue now is that we are currently a bit in a declining phase, but there are some signs that the declining phase could be over. Uh, so if we measure these time cycles here, hard to call exactly where one begins, where one ends. This one fits relatively neatly. Um, given that we recently got close to testing the red 200 weekly moving average, which was a big deal here, Pro approached it here. The context of uh, a cycle low is very, very interesting. If we go here to the daily data points, we can see here that uh, the bulls have really struggled with this green 50 day moving average. But the big change on Friday is that we have a candlestick that smashed through it. So you have a bit of a breakout from a cons consolidation pattern. So the, uh, the odds of this favoring the bulls is elevated. Here you can see the RSI and uh, the PPOs, also the MACD. The MACD is now testing a level where we have seen reversals in the past. Uh, some would argue that that is not the correct way to use MACD, but the pattern is, is here nonetheless. Uh, we see that there is a bit of a floor here for the MACD on lean hog futures. Uh, RSI and the PPOs are showing something similar. When we go to the daily data points, uh, we are far away from being overbought here on the dailies, which means that the rally that is in development, it could go significantly higher. At least there isn't like the overbought risk at all uh, or on the weeklies or the dailies. I write uh, time cycles, bull, MACD, and 200 weekly moving average average support here uh, as the intrinsic signal, the bulls get 16, I mean 6, okay, 6 uh, points here on the technicals. Next we will look at the seasonality. Looking first here to the left, uh, we do see that uh, in red over the last 10 years, blue the last 7, green the last five, we usually see some strength into February. Looking here to the right, December is a very green month. So far we have a 3.6% gain for December, but uh, looking at some of the previous years, uh, there could be uh, more left in the rally. Uh, looking at January, it's recently been messy. Uh, but since 2015, you could argue that it's been more uh, bearish. But December is, uh, yeah, very good month. I give bulls three here on uh, the seasonality. December is very, very strong. Uh, we don't uh, have huge gains, gains so far in December, so there could be more uh, fuel left here. I will give uh, the bulls uh, three here on the tech, on the fundamentals as well. Let's uh, look at relative performance. 
uh, with the weekly data points, uh, we have 69% positive correlation with S&P 500, 81% with the agriculture ETF, DBA, and 63% with lean hogs and live cattle. So LE is the live cattle futures. Let's look at the hogs uh, ETF uh, from Wisdom Tree. Okay, so in this case, uh, we long term get 82% um, positive correlation. It is the highest, but it means that there is not perfect tracking. Uh, with the daily data points, it's it's minus 20%, so that is a significant divergence. Short term, there is 12% with S&P 500 and 63% with DBA. So what happens with DBA is going to have the biggest effect on lean hogs. Very interesting stuff happening here with DBA because... Uh, you can see that this blue 100 week moving average ever since uh, 2012, it was a major resistance level. What was resistance can now potentially be support. So far, we are seeing a bit of a bounce from the 100 weekly moving average. That is definitively something that pushes me uh, in a bullish direction. Uh, let's look at the dailies. Seeing some kind of consolidation pattern, but but uh, it, it's a bit rounding top ish. It's not a top in the sense of being at a top, but um, yeah, you do get that pattern here, which is not um, not ideal. Let's look at these other indicators. Yeah, kind of stuck in limbo on the weeklies and on the dailies as well. Uh, but I think this is more bullish than bearish uh, because we have such a key moving average support. Uh, let's quickly look here at uh, the seasonality for the DBA. Yeah, it could be some strength into uh, 22nd ish of December. Looking at December here to the right, re recently it actually has been somewhat bullish, uh, but January is messy and February is more clearly bearish and March is very bearish so seasonality here for the DBA is not super favorable. Okay so let's now compare lean hogs with the DBA. So let's do it like this then we get the DBA. Okay um it's a bit messy uh, but there are some time cycles here. So the, the question is, uh, how reliable have they been in uh, the past? They have shifted a bit. Uh, you see that during previous time cycle lows, the retracement from the highs were more than we currently have. Looking at RSI, we are not at a, at a screaming buy level. Now let's look at the dailies here. Uh, lean hogs is not at an overbought level versus the DBAs, so we could see more outperformance from uh, lean hogs. Let's look a bit at the seasonality. So for December, very bullish for lean hogs. It usually tends to outperform the DBA significantly. January, on the other hand, as you can see, especially since 2014, it's very messy. It can be. Um, yeah, very bullish or very bearish. The last few years have been uh, decidedly uh, with a bearish average. Then again, we are still in December. I think that especially the strength we saw here from the DBA uh, moving average support, it pushes me to give this one two bulls on relative performance. So we get a 3.5 here to the bulls. Uh, we are potentially at time cycle lows, a bullish rising phase in development, and we are at MACD and 200 weekly. Moving average support. We 
have some time to go through interesting moves of the year. So let's look at the S&P 500 year-to-date performance. Yes, we do see some pretty red numbers from some very famous uh, companies. Amazon down minus 47%. So let's have a bit of a look at what's up with Amazon. Mm, this does not look good unless, unless you think, and it is possible, that this is horizontal support. Well, it is potential horizontal support. Doesn't mean it's going to hold. But if this level doesn't hold, then the downside for Amazon is very substantial. Indeed. Um, so this is a Hail Mary here for Amazon. This is really a level where the bulls need to rally the troops. Now let's look at the dailies. Yeah, I mean, maybe this low here from the 9th of November is going to help out a bit to form a low. Let's look at, you know, RSI, PPOs. Yeah, we are at a rel relatively low level on weekly RSI and the 20-week PPO in purple. Uh, and also, frankly, some of the other PPOs. These levels have formed lows in the past. If you look here at the red 200-week PPO, this current level formed the low in 2008, you know, the global financial crisis. So let's actually zoom back a bit to review that uh, event. So that would be here. That wasn't, that wasn't a bad time to turn bullish on Amazon. Um, here with the daily data points. Um, it's a bit noisy. Uh, we don't we don't have like a super clear signal here on the dailies. There is the seasonality uh, to the left here. We usually see over the last five years in green, seven years in blue, ten years in red. We tend to see more strength into late December. Um, then we get weakness to the right here. December usually is um, a red month. It is. So far, we have a have a nine percent loss for December. If if we do like a rough estimate of the average here, that's more bearish than the average. Looking here at January, ever since twenty twelve, January has actually been more of a green month, but it's not a clearly green month. So yeah. The seasonality is a bit messy, looking here at the fundamentals. Price book, very low. Price to sales in yellow, also very low. If we zoom in a bit here, you see here that the price earnings isn't too shabby either. I'm not saying that Amazon is some screaming deal, but it's when you have had these kinds of moves and we are at you know, technical potential support, that is when uh, there could be opportunities in the more bullish direction. So 47 analysts are covering the stock. The average price target is 54% above us. Highest is 93-ish percent above. Lowest is actually 9% below us. I do think that Amazon, given that we are testing big uh, horizontal support here, it's interesting. Uh, the fundamentals are, are saying a bit of a bullish message. Seasonality is a bit messy. January, is, it has been a bit strong. But December, the, the current month, it's uh, noisy. So we have looked at Lean Hog Futures. There is an ETF for it, uh, the Hogs ETF, but the correlation wasn't really that strong. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. Now, the thing is that if there is demand for Lean Hogs ETFs, then they will be made. So that is one of the reasons why I make videos like this, to talk about interesting products, because if people talk about it, then all of a sudden you will see Great ETFs and ETNs uh, come out. Yeah. Um, we looked also at Amazon. 
I do think that Amazon is an interesting stock to have on your bull radar. It doesn't mean I'm like a roaring bull here for Amazon. Uh, we have, but but then again, this sell-off has been very substantial, and there are many mutual funds out there that uh, must uh, be bullish. Uh, they cannot short stocks, so they are likely then to rotate out of stocks that have have outperformed and have become overvalued and into some of stocks that uh, have underperformed. So, there, so those forces could benefit Amazon.